Do you hear me? Thank you, Professor Pollack, for inviting me to this beautiful conference. I have uh, chosen the theme, New and Surprising Properties of Water as Carrier of Life. And short content, we have a proof of existence of something new which is connected to uh, water, water in subtle matter, dark energy, dark matter, and a life force with vitalis which will pop up. Physical anomalies explained by subtle matter, extension of thermodynamics, technical applications of free energy formation generation from subtle matter <coughs> together with water, quanta of subtle matter in the historic review, and an extended physics of matter and life in the universe. Let's all start with the proof of existence of subtle matter in inanimate systems. <coughs> you have a beautiful balance, not seen here, uh, state-of-the-art balance from Sartorius or Metla in Germany or in Switzerland. And the two pen pedals you can fit via stainless steel, via some samples suspended to the balance. If you put two identical glass flasks, identical in volume, <coughs> closed gas tight, and you start to measure this in the range of a few seconds every time, uh, you get a baseline, zero baseline in time, this is time, and this is a mass difference between the two flasks. <coughs> and if you subtract the first difference, mass difference which you measure, you get zero, it means the baseline perfectly, one day, two days, three days, four days. This is a confirmation of the law, first law of thermodynamics, the conservation law of energy and matter in, under non-relativistic conditions. The point is, <coughs> if you silver plates this in a a glass flask internally and close it again gas tight, <coughs> then the mass is not constant. This flask gets heavier and heavier and gets heavier and after one month, you have an increase of about one um, milligram. The accuracy of the balance is uh, 0.1 microgram and uh, you have a violation of the conservation law of energy found. And this indicates this violation of the conservation law of energy and mass, that something is absorbed here at this face border of the silver plated interior of the glass flask. And it turns out in many successive um, tests, over some hundreds of such, such tests, that you absorb here something which we can call a new form of matter, a subtle form of subtle matter with real mass, with variable mass, you see, we can really weigh something. And you don't see it, uh, this form of matter has almost no electromagnetic interaction. Therefore, you can't see it, you can't taste it. You c all the five senses are not uh, able to detect this form of matter, but you can weigh it. And uh, so we have a kind of a, a field-like, it is ex extended in field, space, spatially extended, a form of field-like matter with real macroscopic mass, and this implies, of course, a new source of real energy. The absorption of this form of matter to the silver-bladed interior of the flask is due to a so far unknown scientific uh, interaction at phase boundaries, at cross-phase boundaries, especially with high symmetry. So you have a sphere, you have a very high symmetry, and then you have a good absorption rate. This test was done in 1999, December 20, and uh, ended at January 2000, and my first publication in a peer-reviewed journal about subtle matter um, uh, due to the gravitational anomalies was done in 1992. And other people have also reported about such anomalies. Uh, this was, for example, Dr. Hauschka in uh, 34, last century. He controlled the mass constancy of, grassy, of sprouting grass seeds in gas tightly closed glass ampoules, dependent on the position of the moon over a whole year. And he found that if he started his test prior to full moon, he found positive mass deviations. Okay, again, this is time and the vertical axis are the 
found mass anomalies, and uh, at new moon he found uh, negative mass changes. And if the boarding, if the seeds started to die up out after a few days due to lack of oxygen, the mass is again turned back to zero. This is the first indication that this kind of anomaly and this kind of subtle matter is connected to biology and that this form of uh, subtle matter uh, has a bioactive, has bioactive properties. If he would have made the test only here in October, he would found a beautiful baseline and he would say nothing is happening. So you see in, in this point that uh, tests with subtle matter are time dependent and they are, uh, they are dependent on constellations of celestial bodies, in this case the moon, but you get also uh, very strong anomalies. If you have a solar transits of Mercury or Venus, you find extreme strong uh, gravitational an anomaly similar to these found here. Hauschka interpreted these de deviations as a creation of mass, of normal matter, and the destruction, annihilation of normal matter. This cannot be accepted. Uh, it is not a destruction and, and creation of normal matter. What happens here is that at the phase boundaries, that means the cell membranes, which are f as, uh, generated during sprouting, absorption of subtle matter takes place, and if the system dies, this matter leaves the system through the glass wall without any problems. Positive mass changes indicate that gravitational effects of subtle matter uh, indicate a positive sign of subtle matter, and negative mass changes indicate anti-gravitative effects of subtle matter with a negative sign. So this, that means these forms of, of, of subtle matter can have both signs and um, you can make, in principle, if you are able to work uh, at a technological level with anti-gravitative forms of subtle matter with a negative sign, you could make anti-gravitative effects even on the macroscopic scale. <coughs> Both effects form, both forms of effects can be dependent on constellations of celestial objects and um, <coughs> uh, because these subtle fields are reaching very far in space. <coughs> also the capillary results of Colisco, of Schwenk, Maria Thun during solar eclipses or Ehrenfried Pfeiffer's Kappa CL2 crystallization results can now be explained from the research and also the research of N5, all inspired by Rudolf Steiner, can be explained on the basis of this subtle matter, which was not possible in the realm of uh, present-day physics. <coughs> Time does not allow to go into details. Now, if you take a, a person, a sleeping person or a balance, and you, wear, you are weighing the, the, the weight of the sleeping person, in uh, half a second over 20 minutes or half an hour or two days, you get usually such a, such a, uh, a result. That means you see fluctuations due to the breathing and the breast chest moving and breathing and so on. And this can explain easily, these deviations can easily be explained by modern physics. But if you continue such tests, you also can find sometimes very strange gravitational anomalies. I had a person sleeping without any motion on the back, lying on the back on my balance. Uh, also four posts were, uh, 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 were measured from, uh, from electronic balances and the four, the four weight, uh, uh, weights were then electronically combined to a weight to a combined weight, which is indicated here. You see the person slept for about 20 minutes and the, the weight of the person dropped down by 650 gram. In between, you had other anomalies, uh, a peak of plus 300 grams and one minus 180 grams. And then when the person woke up, which you can see here to any movements, if, if a person sleeps and wakes up, spontaneous bodily movements are done. And these movements can be uh, were indicated or registered by the balance of course as strong movements. So these strong movements indicate that the person woke up and then the weight jumps from minus, minus 650 gram back to the line where it should be. That means there is something to the body of a person which you do not see, but you can weigh it. And this seems to be a field body, 
bound to the water in, in the person, the, the, bodies, the body of a, of a person has about 70% of water. And water is a very good absorber for this uh, kind of, of subtle matter. So bound to the water of the body, you have around your body something which nobody knows, except if you have paranormal abilities and you could see this unusual things, but in the normal waking state, you see there is nothing. There is something which you can weigh, and this is quite a lot. If people are meditating, for example, <coughs> with a TM praxis, I had couldn't found mass changes in the range of more than one kilogram. From a baseline starting, coming back to the baseline after the meditation, and in between mass changes in the range of 1,000 gram. This leads to a scientific explanation of complementary medicine, energy medicine, alternative medicine, holistic medicine, and so on and so on. That means we, are, we have a gross body, a visible gross body, and this is not only the case for a, a living human being, but for any living being here on Earth. Any living being has a visible gross body and an invisible field body, as I call it. And um, these two together determine your health system because the field body seems to control the microbiological processes in the gross body and even the psychic processes in the brain. So the gross body is only a resonance instrument to the non-visible field body. And of course, uh, from here you have influences on a subtle level to the gross body and this implies effects of homeopathy and other things which are part of complementary medicine, which today is not accepted, so to say, at universities. Mm. There's someone speaking, this disturbs me a lot. Could you please be silent? Yes, hello? Could you please be silent? Thank you. And of course, this body can, this field body can sometimes depart from the cross body, then you can have an out of body experience or a near death experience. And in the case of death, you get an irreversible separation of the two bodies, of the cross body and the field body. The cross body is going back to Earth, and the field body lives in another dimension, which I can describe in research about uh, uh, subtle matter quantitatively in a parallel universe, and has a chance to get reborn so we can have a wheel of, si of life where we can change our situation from normal life where we have a cross and a subtle body to another life where we have only a subtle body, but also the responsibility of the things which we have done here is also reborn and stays as memory in this body, so you should be very careful of things which you are doing. Those forms of subtle plus and minus matter are carriers of consciousness. So it seems that this is what we call your consciousness. It is a very high intelligent field and this is not only the case for the human field body, but for all field bodies. That means even animals which have field bodies can be very intelligent as we know from the primates or from some crows or from other animals because it's only a question of the resonance of the neurons of the brain system to this field body, how your intelligence is expressed. And this can be expressed even in animals quite to some extent. And now we come to water. I have postulated first that water is an absorber of this field body. This can be proven very easily. <coughs> so you take a Schauberger vertex, uh, close it gets tight. Here you have a, a, a box where the water is flowing in and a pump. The pump uh, pu pumps it back and you have here a right turning vertex seen from the top. And you are weighing this on a balance for some hours, 20 hours and so on. So you get a starting point if you subtract the, third, the first mass from all the rest weighing results. And then after some hours, this system, this mass drops down, drops down. You get a lot of negative peaks. That means absorption of subtle matter, which is not stable, but is emitted again, maybe due to the movements of the system, of the, due to the pump. This is a, a very well-established hypothesis. And after some time, you get another horizontal plateau. This means uh, the system is really gas-tight, 
if it would lose water vapor or something like this, this, this drop would continue uh, until the things would be dried off. Now you get a, a horizontal uh, uh, line here, bed, bed form. This means the system is gas tight. And in this 15 to 20 hours, you have a weight loss of four gram or a little bit more, four gram of about five kilogram of water which was circulated. So you can measure something about this water and um, people can determine subjectively bovis units and tap water or mineral water or, or dist distilled water usually has values of 4,500 bo bovis units or even less. And uh, after some time, if the 15 hours circulating this in the vortex, Schauberger vortex, you get um, um, bovis units of 15 million. And this means, the weight loss means you have absorbed here this form of subtle matter with a negative sign. It is very interesting that a subtle matter with a positive sign has health destroying effects, entropic effects, I call it entropic quality. And uh, subtle matter with a negative sign has complementary properties, it has uh, anti-entropical uh, effects, I call it neck entropic neck effects. So we have here a possibility for a neck entropically activation of mortar. And in one of the former uh, lectures, there was discussed something about spring water, which is very healthy. So spring water very often has very high loads of neck entropic water. This is what ma water makes healthy. It is not only the hexagonal structure or something like this. It is a loading of water with neck entropic subtle matter, which makes water to uh, a medical instrumentation, to a medicine which you can use to improve health in persons. So if pe people drink such water, it should not have 15 mil million bovis units. This would be much too much. From this water, you can uh, only drink a few droplets or a few cubic centimeters. But if you go to a neck entropic um, activation in the range of 10,000 to 20,000, then you can sell, sell such a water as activated water which improves your health. You can also measure objectively the redox potential which is zero in the distilled water and drops down to minus 50 millivolt. CPH increases and this correl correlates to the, to the um, Nernst equation which is known since 100 years, as the pH increases and the electric conductivity goes go also increases to about 50 uh, microsiemens. So you could quantify these subjective bovis units by objective me measurements, which is not a problem. And it seems that this neck entropic subtle matter is the actual universal life force that means a long search for this vitalis. This vitalis was postulated that any life must be based on some kind of neck entropy, already Schrödinger published in this book, What is Life? The theory and the speculative assumption that there must be some neck entropic effect in thermodynamics which counteracts the second law of thermodynamics. On the gross level, this cannot be found. But on the subtle level, this is reality, and we are now can understand that if this field is neck entropically dominated, then you are a healthy person. But if the liver of your system has an entropic component which is dominant or dom which dominates the neck entropic part, then you have a liver problem. And this means the vis vitalis is really what dominates in this field, and this makes you and a rainworm and a bacterium and a cow or a horse, a living system based on neck entropic thermodynamics. <coughs> this is an important point. The possibility to increase intensity of subtle matter in water leads to the formulation of a, of a new law of thermodynamics, which I term the law of neck entropy or syntropy. We, you must extend, now we become very scientific, you must extend this, the Gibbs function, this is usually the Gibbs function, which determines from the sign of the resulting value whether a process is running spontaneously, such as a burning candle or, 
your car where the gasoline is burning automatically. All this is determined from the so-called Gibbs function, the second law of thermodynamics, where the, the entropy, the disorder, over uh, calculated over the whole breath process must systematically increase so that the process can run uh, spontaneously. To this Gibbs function, we have now to add other terms because it can be shown experimentally that um, subtle matter effects can change temperatures, can produce energies, and of course they have this ability of creating of an entropy, an entropy power within them, which are able to uh, um, determine the shape, the morphog morphogenesis of subtle uh, processes as already postulated by Rupert Sheldrake, but without any explanation, but phenomenologically this is well known since a long time. This explains, for example, the memory of water and maybe also con may also uh, contribute to the easy water of Professor Pollack. You see the power of form creation in a small pond of a company where the surplus necentropically activated water is put to the pond and if this pond freezes in winter without you are doing anything, beautiful flower-like structures pop up in the ice. This is a typical exp example that neck entropy has a possibility to generate gross shapes, forms, and structures, not only in the ice, but also in living systems all around the world. And Darwin's theory, of course, due must uh, modify it due to this term. It is the only theory which you can think about if you have only the gross matter available, then you have to take up uh, stochastical processes and, and, and so on. But with this term, you can forget the mutations and so on. This system can uh, easily generate life from dead systems if the proper chemicals are available and can, sig signif sig can significantly improve the evolution of the such a system. And uh, furthermore, um, for example, Due to this term, you can get, if this term is increased, also you, it, it, it implies always that this term is in high intensity. In the normal bench scale tests, you can forget this. So over 300 years, it was very, very reasonable to only take this into, into account. But now where we can increase this uh, neck entropic things, the neck, uh, neck entropic intensities of subtle matter, these terms become dominant. And <coughs> due to the new subtle term in water, for example, under increased intensities of subtle matter with a negative sign in an aqueous solution, transmutative or low energy nuclear reactions start to happen. And you can use this. Uh, low energy nuclear reactions under ambient temperatures and amb amb ambient conditions with high enough intensity of subtle matter <coughs> for free energy generation. So it is possible, <coughs> sorry, it is possible in water with high intensity of subtle matter that the oxygen in water transmutes into carbon under the loss of a helium atom. So from H2O you get H2C this is not saturated in, in, in chemistry and polymerizes, so you immediately get diesel fuel. And this diesel fuel you can put immediately in your car and it generates no noxes and no uh, nanoparticles. It is a very clean diesel fuel. And <coughs> wherever in the world modern technology has been applied due to the second law of thermodynamics, nature was damaged, destroyed, or more and more and more negative things happened. With the extended Gibbs function, the law of neck entropy can counteract these destructive processes <coughs> by increasing objectively, as we have seen here, and in other possibilities uh, which I have not discussed, or subjectively, by subjective technologies of consciousness <coughs> to increase a neck, entrop a neck entropic sub subtle field intensity in yourself, in the surrounding, and also in physical systems. And by this application of neck entropic subtle matter, we have a, a technical process and processes of consciousness 
to counteract the terrible law of the second law of thermodynamics, the entropy and disorder in principle must increase. Now we come to another point. The shown gravitational anomalies can only be theoretically described by Newton's law of gravity if it is extended by terms of subtle matter. This is, you all know, this is a Newton's term between two masses, m1 and m2. You have a cross-cross interaction, but if mass m2 has also subtle fields bound to it, then you must go to this term, and you must integrate here a little bit. Don't mind the mathematics. You have now a cross-subtle interaction. And if both terms have also field bodies uh, connected, then you come to the third term, you have a subtle-subtle interaction. You may think this is very curious stuff, but the additional terms allow the explanation of all observed gravitational tests and anomalies, and they allow, for example, the explanation of the anomalies of stellar velocities in galaxies without any problem. Subtle matter with a positive sign seems to be identical to dark matter, while subtle matter with a negative sign seems to be identical to dark energy. But these are out of the standard model of elementary particles. That means in CERN, you only, only can find particles which have point-like structures with electric charges, which have uh, masses of 10 to the minus 30 kilogram, like an electron. If you have a quantum of, electro of, of subtle matter, it has a macroscopic mass in the range, I show this a little bit later, in where, where you can read, it has no electromagnetic, uh, almost no electromagnetic charge. That means it passes through the Atlas detector without any trace. That means with a, with a, with a method or methods used in the CERN um, accelerators, it is impossible to detect this, to detect dark energy and to detect dark matter. At least this is my uh, assumption that uh, this is a field-like form of matter which, is, uh, which you can weigh uh, if you have proper weighing methods. And the additional terms also explain, for example, acceleration anomalies of NASA spacecraft near Shoemaker in flyby maneuver around Earth and of similar acceleration anomalies of Pioneer 10 and 11 spacecraft of NASA in the solar system. Maybe you remember that if you guide such a spacecraft to make a pass around the Earth, uh, the spacecraft velocities uh, increases by acceleration effects due to this turn and uh, two times the velocity of the, of the movement of the Earth is added without any cost to the spacecraft. And in this process, NASA has measured a lot of anomalies which, which are unexplainable. And with these terms, you can easily calculate such stuff and can prove that the Earth has two fields around them, one field with a positive sign and one field with a negative sign. And the negative global fields, the negentropic global field of subtle matter gives Sheldrake's global morphogenetic field a so far missing physical explanation. So with these terms, you come from phenomenological considerations of Sheldrake's to, uh, to real science based on measurements and understanding. It's because celestial subtle fields reach very far millions of kilometers or even light years into space, their use extension, which I can measure and, and calculate, proves the existence of the so-called teleologic or astrological entanglements of field bodies of celestial objects with the field bodies of humans and of animals, plants, or inanimate physical systems such as capillars here on Earth. So due to this, uh, a third term, you have subtle, subtle effects, not only in the gravitational area, but also in other areas, and you have an entanglement of life with the universe, which is not possible at the cross level. To explain it at the, at the cross level. Usually, the relative area of natural constants in the order of max is in the order of magnitude of about two. So if you calculate according to the core data, so actual code data, the relative rel uh, uncertainties of Planck's constant and the electric elementary electric charge, you're in the range of one or two. But the relative error of the gravitational constant, she, is significantly larger uh, by a factor of 
7,000 larger than, than the one. And this is an important unexplained anomaly in cosmology and in physics. We can understand how this happens if we look how the constants, uh, gravitational constants is, is uh, experimentally uh, measured. This is a famous experiment. It is called the Washington Chi experiment. You have uh, steel balls which are very precisely measured in weight and in distance and, in, and so on and so on. High tech and they rotate and this rotation is controlled. But the, the constant, the gravitational constant which comes out uh, switches from 1968 to 2000 tremendously. They have all very small errors, but there is a systematic problem in this curve. And this systematic problem depends on the fact that the metal balls which are swirling around here have not only masses according to the metal of the balls, but also to the subtle field which is bound to the metals. And this I can easily uh, check that metals have bound subtle fields by weighing experiment. So it means what we need for an accurate uh, uh, determination of, of the, const of the uh, gravitational constant is the knowledge about these fields and the second term in this, in this uh, extended uh, um, gravitational law of, of Newton. In principle, these findings imply an extension of Einstein's general theory of relativity and of physics and natural sciences in general. This is because both forms of entropic and negentropic ne subtle matter, that means cold dark matter and, and dark energy, contribute to about 96% to the total universal mass at submicroscopic, microscopic, macroscopic, cosmic, and cosmological scales and levels. I have not uh, given ins, uh, information about the next point, but I could do it, but this would take an another half hour or so. Furthermore, also quantum mechanics must be extended and on only with subtle matter, you can understand what a chemical orbital is and so on and so on. First step in the direction of an extended new physics have been done in research in subtlety. Now I come to the end of my lecture. Stepwise mass changes in measured uh, weighing tests, you see here jumps, weight jumps, you see here weight jumps, and uh, this uh, weight jumps of detectors of subtle matter indicates the absorption or emission of subtle quanta of subtle matter. Here a silver, internally silver bladed glass flask was used as a detector, and here solid liquid crystals from company Merck. So this <laughs> If you evaluate this data, you get this uh, experimentally detected quanta of subtle matter. The first quanta, 21, 1.5, this is a 95% confidence interval. And this is, fits very well to the so-called Planck mass predicted from Planck already in 1905, a combination of Planck's quantum of action, velocity of light, and Newton's gravity constant in this way gives 21.77, your point here 21.5 plus minus 1.3. Mr. Stoney, an Irish physicist, has already 20 years prior to Max Planck also described a uh, an elementary mass uh, did, uh, definitely evaluated from the uh, elementary electric charge and the Newton's gravit uh, gravitation constant in this way combined yields 1.86 and I find 1.87 plus minus and so on and so on. After this detection, I had the idea that there, that there could be more quanta, and I combined more natural constants, for example, this constant with Sommerberg's fine structure constants, yielding this value 0.37, and I find 0.36 plus, plus minus 0.02. That means we have now three quanta of subtle matter, which we can combine with natural constants of modern physics. And this leads, of course, to copy to uh, this leads to a quantitative bridge of subtle matter to physics because the real masses of the detected quanta can be described now by natural constants. There are more bridges, but uh, the time does not allow out to, to, to go into the details. Quanta of field like matter define a so far unknown category of matter and parallel to the gross elementary particles, which we know from the particles, so 
And this, uh, they are, that means these subtle uh, quanta elementary entities, what I seem to be, from my point of view, they are elementary entities of consciousness, which can associate like, associ uh, like atoms form molecules and molecules form tissues. The same way these elementary particles can associate to structures and can build up a field body of a living being, of a human being, or a cow, or a horse. Now we come to a very strange point. In historic reports about an invisible form of matter, undividable supple quanta have already been described 2,500 years ago from Democritus. Isn't this marvelous? <laughs> Democritus uh, stated that there is a well-known form of gross matter of the visible universe and its objects, and they are generated by atomic particles, a postulate of, of Democritus and Maharishi, a master of the Vedic tradition, says uh, exactly the same story, and his, this was a starting point of my research. He concluded that this form of subtle matter is the basis of the universal space-time geometry. So we get a space-time ether, as already postulated by Einstein after the formulation of his general theory of rel relativity, and it searched for such a relativistic ether, as he termed it, uh, in three huge publications up to 1953, a few years before he died. So I can deliver this form of ether, ether and uh, it was predicted from Maharishi that such an ether exists on the basis of a form of subtle matter which we don't see today. Even Dalai Lama published in his books, in, in discussions with his science, scientists, a second, another kind of matter which we don't see. And in old Tibetan uh, um, texts, he said there is described some kind of space matter. That's feel like matter, spatially extended matter, which I believe that I have detected. So I get support <laughs> from my readings from old traditions, and I can summarize that uh, the primordial matter described by Platon and discovered and is detected from the Democritus in ancient priest tradition, the Veda is uh, used in the Vedic literature in, uh, from ancient in Indian tradition, space matter from Dalai Lama from the ancient Tibetan tradition, Xi or Psi from ancient Chinese tradition, life force with vitalis and with letalis in modern times, Dark matter, dark energy are nothing else but subtle matter and they are altogether consciousness. And this can be seen with paranormal abilities without any weighing technology. This concludes that these people had these paranormal abilities which you, which we normally don't have in the waking state. Now the second and the, my last two uh, figures, subtle field bodies can be found at all cross systems in the universe, makes them lively systems because these field bodies are carriers of all forms of, of consciousness bound by gravity or by so far on and form specific interaction to phase boundaries and phase boundaries around the universe everywhere. Omnipresent subtle field bodies in the universe are invisible in the waking state, but they can be objectively weighed in modern science, or maybe subjectively being cognized in altered states of consciousness. You see how altered states of consciousness has become a very important point in the story, and in research of uh, subtlety I can explain the differences between waking state, paranormal states, and higher states of consciousness in a quantitative way. And they can explain a lot, the subtle matter can explain a lot of present day physical anomalies and lead to so far unknown new physical effects in water and in other systems. And the final picture uh, file which I would like to show, subtle field bodies can be found everywhere, spreading life and consciousness throughout the universe, the whole universe, not only in animate systems. That means looking for bacteria on Mars is a nice story and, and only a few people can do this and have the money and the technology technological resources, but from this point of view, it is almost a trivial story because Mars has a field, like our Earth has a, a subtle field, and the sun and all celestial ob objects and the bodies in, in the universe, and these fields are living fields of consciousness. At the gross level, 
all the universal objects are spatially separated from each other. You are separated from me, and people are trying with high intensities to unify themselves with all strange things. They eat something, they drink something to unify them with matter and so on. But at the subtle level of the universe, there seems to be a living entangled wholeness. So your feet body is connected to everything in the universe, and you need only a little bit paranormal abilities to realize this and to look you via your field body, which is a, a, a library of, of uh, information from former lives to make research in principle throughout your life and through the whole universe. So these are some references and you can buy some things uh, by Amazon, Discovery of Subtle Matter, for example, worldwide. And uh, thanks for your attention. And do not forget, introducing only facts which fit to previous theories and ideologies is pseudoscience. I allowed me to quote uh, Luc Montagnier. Thank you. Um, I would like uh, to thank you, Klaus, uh, basically two times. Yeah? First time for the beautiful presentation with the bridging and all the sciences. And second time you inspired at least us uh, many years ago to study this neck entropic studies. And we, well, we, we can basically largely confirm um, your findings in uh, electrochemistry and uh, microbiology in relation to neck entropy. <laughs> okay, okay uh, please, uh, questions. Before I, before I ask my question, let me announce that the pic after the question and answer session is the picture taking. So please don't go, don't go to lunch, go to the coffee place for pictures. Okay, and my question is, do you, can you envision a situation where a psychic, for example, could induce a change of, uh, of mass or change of weight? Yes, yes. What kind of experiment would you suggest? Oh, I have done this. As from the Vedic tradition of Maharishi, there are um, uh, mental technologies uh, for levitation. And that means we can intensify the neck entropic subtle field in our body. This has two effects. We get healthier because this has healing prop properties. And the second effect is that we get lighter. And um, I personally perform these technologies in 30 years every day, twice a day. Uh, and because I would like to improve my health and uh, live a little bit longer. But I have taken one of the people who can do this levitation technology, apply these technologies very successfully, better than me, on one of my balances and have measured him and I found a weight loss of 15 kilogram. So this is really something. That, and he this is a person who did this test with me on my balance that I am just in, the, in, 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 in a chat like, if you would invite me again, I could even improve the, the weight about more than 50 kilogram. So there are technologies in consciousness which are known since thousands of years in Vedic science uh, where persons can get information, can be introduced so that they can apply things in their mind, in their thinking process to interact with subtle matter and can modify the intensities of subtle matter in the individual system. This is one possibility. I showed you the water swirling. This is another thing which is completely out of our body. So with, with, with purely physical systems, uh, uh, Schauberger vortex, you also get, you get negative weight changes, which means levitative weight changes. And I have experiments, uh, really a lot of experiments, is with purely electromagnetic systems, which also produce levitating effects. That means if you understand the theory of this neck entropic subtlety subjectively and objectively, we can get levitation effects in physics, in physical systems, and in personal systems. And this, this so-called yogic flying program, uh, which was initiated from Maharishi 40 years ago, to give people the ability to levitate themselves is the strongest means to purify, for example, collective consciousness. And all um, societies in the world, not only in Germany, where we have a very negative collective consciousness due to things which happened in the last century from starting from our uh, nation, 
but all nations, every company, every family has a collective consciousness, and in this consciousness is stored all what is happening in a positive and in a negative way, and this collective consciousnesses, if I take the plural from conscious, uh, act back on the people who live in the collective consciousness. That means to purify collective consciousness by this necentropic flying processes is a very good uh, way to purify the thinking of the German and of the French people and of the British people and so on throughout the world. And this was, uh, from Maharishi's point of view, the bottleneck for the evolution of mankind to higher states of consciousness, to a, con to a culture of peace around the world. This is all connected to your question, uh, Professor Pollack, to, to get uh, levitating effects. Uh, I have measured them, they exist. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your mind-expanding lecture. Um, I have a question, but before I uh, ask the question, I just need to frame it for you, because quite recently, a few weeks ago, a German artist uh, from Frankfurt asked us to use our cymoscope instrument to make visible a baby's first cry, uh -huh. and then secondly, the death rattle of a person as they're dying. So we did that, and we, we, we sent the images to him for his exhibition in Frankfurt. Okay. But this brought to my mind a question, which I'm sure has a <laughs> occurred to everyone in this room, um, which is, what is the difference between a living person and a dead person, and be, given that all of the cells in your body are still alive at the point when you uh, clinically die? And, um, and, and this brought up the question in my mind when you were mentioning earlier about the difference in weight between someone that's sleeping and waking. Um, has, anything, uh, has anyone ever tried to measure the weight of a person uh, while they're living and then immediately after their death? Exactly, this has been done. Okay, okay, can, can you do a short uh, question, short answers, and then to postpone long uh, question, long answer to... Yes, <laughs> it was in 1907 when uh, McDougall, Dr. McDougall, a chef, a, ch a chef of a clinic in Boston, Massachusetts, uh, 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 took uh, patients which were, had uh, leukemia and uh, I hope I pronounce this properly, I hope you understand. Uh, and uh, he, he knew they would die in the next few days and he asked kindly these patients whether they would allow to be laid on a balance which he had, produ had, uh, had produced. And in the process of dying, Mac Dr. McDougall uh, measured uh, mass deviations up to 40 grams in the process of dying. And uh, this is, has been done 100 years ago and I always wonder if I speak about these such things, why in hundred years of the millions and billions of people who die every day, no one in any clinic would have tried to reproduce this. <laughs> so please, if, they have, if you have some chiefs of, of clinics here in our community, or if you know someone uh, from uh, New York, Moscow, or Tokyo, or Berlin, or and in London, it asks them to make such experiments and they would, find, they would find a rich field of activity and it would answer your question in principle. The point is that if this system, this field body leaves the cross body, the completely control about the microbiological breakdown, up down to the DNA cell, this field body is controlling everything. So if this control is missing, you have just a dead person. And this is happening every day. So this is a point of dying and be reborn. You have, you have the blastula, that means uh, 32 cells, uh, this beautiful symmetry combined in the uterus of a, of a lady and you can f imagine that this field is bound again at the face borders of the system and is born as a baby. No problem. And this can go on, okay, it can go on, yeah. it can go on. Uh, okay. One question. Um, I wonder, uh, because I think that uh, you mentioned uh, that there should be some particles, you know, of this subtle matter. Uh, do you connect these particles to the models of dark matter already present, like axions, neutrons, uh, dark photons, and so on? 
all these um, axioms and so on are based on the standard model of elementary particles. They are all point-like. So they have a diameter from 10 to the minus 15 meters. They have some charges and some spins and some other quantum properties. And this is a postulation of modern science that finally they find some curious point-like particles at CERN which they can term are dark matter. I believe that dark matter belongs to this other category of matter, this field-like form of matter, which you never can detect at CERN. It's just another, you need a second method in, uh, of, of detection in CERN. You have the highest four billion dollar expensive technology, is a world machine it is termed, and I use a small balance a complementary method where you are not allowed to look on it because when you look on my detector, you can measure the beam of light which was already predicted by Platon and you get weight changes. So you are not allowed to watch my balance. It must be in a closed system, completely closed. So you need in modern science a complementary method of, of experimentation which costs $100,000 and even you could manage to get something like this and have such a system, and then you can enter in the field of research in subtle matter. That's the point. Thank you very much. <laughs> um,